Hello, I'm Pastor Denny Bell at New Hope Christian Church, 1400 South George Washington Drive in Wichita. Today is World Communion Sunday, which we love to be a part of because it's a day when we recognize that everybody around the world is also partaking in the Lord's Supper. We are meeting in person, we're using masks and hand sanitizer and socially distancing, but we're also available on Facebook and YouTube under the title New Hope Christian Church, Wichita. You can also check us out on our webpage, newhopeccwichita.org. Today's service is on based on Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25, and the sermon title is called Encourage One Another in Love. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, for there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one in God's spirit. We remember our Lord Jesus gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. Let us pray. Bread of heaven, we pray that you would come and meet us here. Offer us the gift of your presence. Show us how we can be fully satisfied by you. Feed us until we hunger no more. Quench our thirst until we long for you and you alone. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share in the feast which he has prepared. I'm sure we're, most of us are familiar with the bumper sticker that says, if you can read this, you're following too close. <laughs> well, the other day, Ron and I were out shopping in a, and we were in the parking lot and as we're going into the store, I saw a pickup truck that had what I considered the Christian take on that particular uh, phrase. In the back of the pickup, there was a little frame, and on the frame was a sign about that big, and it said, do you follow Jesus this close? Mm. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, for the believers that are, are trying to make their path straight and to follow uh, God and Jesus as he taught us, the closer we can get to, to our loving Lord without having any space in between for obstacles and all sorts of uh, distractions that or can mask. happen. <laughs> or a mask. Or a mask. Or in spite of a mask or because of a mask. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to us to provide the way, the truth, and the life so that we may follow him as closely as possible and one day receive our reward when we go to see him again in heaven. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus and the sacrifice he made representative by this meal. Lord, in our congregation, we practice this celebration every week. Others do not quite as often. So today is World Communion Sunday. We are all joined together to celebrate marvelous gift that Jesus gave to us, eternal life with you in heaven. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord Jesus, the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and then he shared it with his disciples, saying, take, eat, this represents my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise. Let's all turn in our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10 and read along silent with me while I start in verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. A little girl, dressed in her Sunday best, was running as fast as she could, trying not to be late for Sunday school. And as she ran, she prayed, Please, Lord, don't let me be late. Please, Lord, don't let me be late. And as she was running and praying, she tripped on a curb and fell, getting her clothes dirty and tearing her dress and she got up and brushed herself off and started running again. And as she ran, she once again began to pray, Dear Lord, please don't let me be late, but please don't shove me again. <laughs> have you ever noticed, or every, have you ever had someone who believed in you, who often spoke words of encouragement and praise? A person who made you feel you could do anything, no matter what. This is the kind of person God wants us to be. People who encourage one another in love. Every person needs to be encouraged at one point or another. We especially need to have someone in our lives who is willing to listen to our stories and affirm us that we are loved. I remember my dear friend, Virginia. She and I spent time together and we would just visit and laugh and support one another. And she would tell me stories about her being a teacher and I would listen to her intently as if I were hearing her stories for the very first time. And I know it meant a great deal to her as it did to me, but then Virginia started to physically and mentally decline, and we could no longer communicate as we had before. For me, it was extremely difficult to bear. However, I was very thankful for the opportunities God had given to us to express our love to one another. And it gave me great comfort to know the time we had had together was never taken for granted. She was always my cheerleading section, urging me on while I was going to seminary. I know even in the worst of times, Virginia knew how very much I cared for her. How about you? Is there someone in your life who needs to know how much you care about them? Is there someone who would benefit from your kind words or listening ears? Has God put upon your heart others that you should reach out to? If so, I would encourage you to make the most of the opportunities that God is giving you. There was a, a wise woman who was traveling in the mountains who found a precious stone in a stream. And the next day, she met another traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. The hungry traveler saw that precious stone and asked her if she was willing to give it to him. And she did so without any hesitation. The traveler left, rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew that stone was worth enough to give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said, 
I know how valuable the stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me something more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. Do you, do you bring sunshine or gloom into a room? Do you encourage or discourage one another? Encouragement to others is something everyone can give. Everybody needs what you have to offer. It may be your time or your listening ears, your presence or even your smile that uplifts others. I mean, who knows? There is no greater investment in life than being a people builder. If we're going to bring out the best in people, then we need to sow seeds of encouragement. Ask God to help you develop a positive attitude. Immerse yourself in his word and pray. And when you wake up in the morning, ask God to help you look for and focus on the positive. Bring sunshine into the world. God works where there's an attitude of faith. And I believe faith is all about hope and trusting God to guide you. Speak positively. Use encouraging words. Monitor your positive and negative remarks. Listen to what you do or do not say. When someone talks about personal difficulties, do not respond back with a gloom and doom attitude. Now, I'm not saying if you're having tough times, there must be something wrong with you or even your attitude. That's not what I'm saying. Life's a fight. It's a good fight of faith. And I encourage people to stay up, stay hopeful, and stay faith-filled. There's a blogger. Her name's Lisa Bartlett. She shares a blog called Five on Friday, Steps to Be an Encourager. And it comes from her publication, Living Echoes. And she says there are five steps to become an encourager, even if you don't think of yourself as one. First, she says, assume everyone needs encouragement. It turns out even people who seem like they're confident and living out God's calling need encouragement too. Everyone needs encouragement in some way or another. And if you know even one person you know someone who needs encouragement. Notice people. Watch and observe people. By noticing people, you can tell a lot about them without even saying a word. Chances are, if you start looking around, you'll find someone who needs encouragement. So I encourage you and urge you to start looking. Do something that's easy for you now. That is like some people, it's easier to send a text message on your phone or on Facebook. And, um, you know, when you do that, you can post that in a matter of seconds, right? Um, but then the next step is do one thing that's harder. Um, writing letters, sending postcards, you know, those, and sending an email it takes a little longer. Um, Talking to people in person if you can, um, or pick up the telephone and call them. The next thought is to equip yourself. You might be more encouraged if you're prepared. In other words, you might have a stash of cards and postcards already at home, you know, in case of. But then you also don't have to be equipped with those specifically. I mean, for some, being encouraged is not natural, you know. For like, for my husband, he's an introvert. It's really difficult for him to, to read my mind when I need encouragement. I wish he would, but that hasn't happened. So if that's not your natural practice, start practicing saying thank you, I appreciate you, you're doing good work. If you're going out, why don't you make a pile of saving extra monies for tips 
if you can find any, since we seem to be a shortage on coins. Listen to other people and observe them when they're encouraging people and learn from that. I mean, it's not hard, but for some, it takes some work. And then I would say, repeat any of the steps that I just talked to you about as needed. Rediscover that the more you encourage, the more you want to encourage. We all need encouragement from one another. We all need a Christ-like love that can encourage because God encourages us. So let's build each other up. Why not? I read recently that encouragement is like a peanut butter. It's like peanut butter on a sandwich. The more you spread it, the better things stick together. Sounds good. Folks, we need each other. We are the body of Christ. As God reminds us through scripture that we who are the part of the body need each other and we need to nourish and cherish the body of believers that we are a part of. Being a part of the body of Christ means that God expects us to participate within that body. Before the COVID crisis occurred, you know, every Sunday when we were together, we, during the time of greeting and fellowship, we were talking and having joy and talking about things that we were worried about or not worried about. We prayed for each other. When we tried to make feel, each other feel like we were important and we tried to take care of each other's needs. And all of these things were and still are especially important in this post-COVID world. I'm not saying that because if you're not here, you're not a part of it, but it does feel artificial when I'm talking to a screen instead of having the warmth of your beauty here. And I miss you. And I'm thankful for those of you that are here because it means a lot than standing here talking to an empty sanctuary. Thank you. We don't have the opportunity to interact like we used to. And that's why it's so important to call each other or send emails or send a letter or even contact each other on Facebook. Even though some of you don't like Facebook, it really is a nice medium to get in touch with people. Contact one another. See how each other's doing. Don't wait and get it second in. Call them yourself. Pray for one another. We all need to minister and encourage each other. At this moment in time, a lot of churches are missing an extremely important part of the nourishing, encouraging ways we need to do for each other. Often as a church community, we forget that part of our journey of growing in the word is what it means to grow in community. It means as a church community of believers that the entire purpose is for us to connect with one another and to connect with God who is at the center. The reality is that the Holy Spirit works through us and in us to bless someone else around us. I'm gonna paraphrase what Jesus might say here is, listen, there's a whole lot of things that you can do. There are a whole lot of things you can do to grow your faith, but whatever you do, make sure what you do blesses others. When we live our lives like that, the body of Christ grows. In fact, everyone around us grows and God gets glorified. We are koania, that's a Greek word for the meaning of fellowship, which means actively participating together. In other words, we are friends together in the ministry of God and we are not to forget one another. We are a spiritual family who trust in the Holy Spirit who are being knit together to work side by side. Think about this description of the church we are a mixture of people with different personalities, different backgrounds, different ideas sometimes, who might never ever 
have been associated with each other, except for one thing, and the one thing that we all have in common is that we love Jesus. And in one way or another, we are being transformed by his amazing love and mercy. And because of that, we bond together. And as Christ followers, we look after each other. Our church sees ourselves on a journey together and we are definitely God's family. True community doesn't happen overnight. Because we are God's family, we begin to find our own places in the church, which helps us get into a deeper relationship within this community and with God. People who would normally never have been together get to love one another. And we are unified through God in one spirit as one body. Sometimes, something happens when believers serve together and when they struggle together side by side. They form a special bond and are forever shaped by the experience of Christian fellowship. As a Christian community, praying and ministering to one another as a family of God is the most important roles of our church family. Our lives overlap in fellowship with one another. That's why when something happens to someone like we know, our church member having COVID, it affects us. We love them. They matter. Therefore, we are there to help and encourage each other as needs arise. As Christ representatives, we are called to share God's love with everyone we meet, not just alone within this church. There will be times when we need, when maybe they need extra measures of support and love. And when things are difficult or when we even mess up or feel as if no one can love us, we need to be cared for and loved. And there are times when we need to care for others, especially when they mess up or are going through difficult times, that's what we are as a body of Christ. Paul's messages throughout all of his writings encourages the believers to be like-minded, to have the same love, and to be one. Having similarities, especially those founded on Christ, can bring us together as believers in our Christian community. It gives us bonds that are not easily broken and that can grow and develop into other things. It connects us in the bond of love. And being alone can be heartbreaking, but working together in community gives us greater opportunities. The early church is the greatest example Whatever the believer did, they did together and built their community in the process. From the big things in life to the smaller things that they did, it brought them together and to learn about who they were and who God was. I believe you know I love the idea of community. I use that word a lot. It applies to everything. And when we pray and worship together, we are building community. Being a part of the community gives us the opportunity to build others up as we are being built up and to discover our gifts and talents as we help others do the same. If you didn't, I didn't have your support while I'm trying to learn how to do technology that's beyond my understanding, I couldn't stand here right now. I'd be embarrassed, and it's through your support and love and encouragement that I have been able to step forward in faith. I mean, we are learning from others as they learn from others, from us, and to see a larger picture of who God is in the world all around us and in ourselves. That's why today on World Communion Sunday, we gather not as individuals, but as a community of believers it is different than being a member of a club or an organization. We're not like that. Every Sunday, as we set aside time, not only for our daily bread, but we also recognize it as a time for God's forgiveness of our sins, his gift of our faith, and our awareness of his love and pursuit of us in life. But most of all, 
Communion celebrates the union we have with each other and all other Christians here on earth. It means throughout the whole world today, especially when we acknowledge it's World Communion Day, we are a family and that God loves us equally. At this table, we are not literally feeding ourselves, but we are feeding our faith. This is not just a meal of remembrance. It is a privilege. It's a priceless gift. It is the foretaste of the feast to come. When you do this, remember me. Together in the body of Christ, we can do greater things to encourage each other in faith and bring Christ's love and peace to a broken world. I believe seeing Christ followers living as Christ believers is the most gratifying experience in my life. I love it when I get glimpses from our church community telling me about the cards or the phone calls they've received or meals that have been brought to them and hearing what you've done to go and reach out to them and encourage them. This is what Paul describes the way we should live and serve and be the church together. I feel both challenged and thankful. I am challenged in realizing that living for Jesus is hard work in striving to do good for others. To rejoice and pray and be thankful continually isn't about skipping through life with our heads up in the clouds. That's not even realistic. It's about remembering in all we do the sacrificial love and grace that we've been shown in Christ. Encouragement is the most important thing in the life of the church. In fact, this is the principal reason we get together each week in God's house to encourage one another in Christian living. Or as the scripture says that I read in Hebrews, consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Do not neglect to meet together as the habit of some, but encourage one another. I don't know if you've heard the story of Fred Rogers, you know, Mr. Rogers. He was a Presbyterian pastor. And one time he was addressing the National Press Club. He said that he knew that the room was filled with many of the nation's best reporters, men and women who had achieved much in their lives. And Rogers took out his pocket watch and he announced that he was going to keep two minutes of silence. He invited everybody in the room to remember the people from their past, parents, teachers, coaches, friends, and others who had made it possible for them to reach this point in their lives. And as the seconds passed and ticked away in those two minutes, he could hear all around the room people sniffling as they were moved by the memories of those coaches, if you will, who had made sacrifices on their behalf and who had given them countless gifts, the voice of wisdom and encouragement. The same could be said for our own journeys of faith. We all could sit here right now and think of those who've influenced and encouraged us throughout life. Let us all be people of God who are filled with promise and conviction. God's people who are brimming with grace and eager to share with others that precious, priceless gift of encouragement. It is my prayer that our community will become a place filled with people who know each other as brothers and sisters with the love of Jesus flowing through each of us on our amazing journey of faith together. Let us encourage one another in love. Carry with you the blessing of God as you go out into this colorful world. Reveal the light of God as the days grow shorter and the darkness increases. Go with the peace of God in your hearts. Amen.